Hello everybody, it is Ebontis, and for liberty and democracy, we are here in Helldivers 2, and in this video, hopefully I can make your journey through the early to mid levels of the game as smooth as possible with some pointers and tips and maybe just a couple things you might not have thought about. So, when it comes to Helldivers, obviously it's Starship Troopers in a video game, which is kind of fantastic. They embrace the themes, the news, all the, it's, it's great. But here on your ship, we're going to talk about some things, and then down on the planet's surface for combat, we're going to talk about some things with weapons and a little more nuanced stuff. But one of the biggest things that you have and that you're going to be unlocking are your stratagems. Now, stratagems have two sections for ship management. You've got, obviously, you can rename your ship if you want to. That's kind of up to you. I can see them putting different ships in here later on. Maybe, but I doubt it. But you've got stratagems, which are going to be what you call down from orbit. They can be heavy weapons. They can be orbital barrages, they can be kind of airstrikes from jets, they can be big orbital specific strikes, or they can actually, you know, drop emplacements for you. They can be engineering things like a grenade launcher, laser cannon, incendiary mine displacement, and you can all the way get down to sentry turrets and some very, very effective stuff. Now, ship modules are the other side of that. What they allow you to do is they allow you to specialize or kind of make any of your stratagems more effective, like more viable, that kind of thing. If you take the hangar, for example, those are the ones where they're the jet strikes. <clears throat> You'll notice a couple things about them. Call in time, damn near instant. Uses, they are limited. And then the cooldown time, 15 seconds between them. Now the ship modules allow you to Decrease the cooldown by half, so you can almost call in two of them in under 10 seconds, which is a little bonkers, especially if you're talking about something like a napalm strike. You've got the option to then have the eagle rearm time reduced by 20%. And then on top of that, you've got the number of stratagem uses per rearm. So you can really be like, hey, if I'm going to focus on these quick airstrikes, we need something big and fast to come in, that can be my specialty. Now, on the other side, somebody like me, if I play a little more solo, kind of want to help with the defense category, I can focus on sentry turrets, like the auto cannon, which is just an absolute monster, pair with like a Gatling gun for little guys. And then I come down here, and I've got, you know, deployment time for sentries is faster. I've got more ammo for all of my sentry turrets. I've got also the ability for them to rotate faster for quicker targeting. And they've also got the ability to make them stronger health-wise. So... Not everything is kind of linked together, but some make sense. Obviously, the bridge. So you've got targeting software upgrades. You've got reduce the deployment time for orbital strikes. Kind of a good idea, actually, because if you call an orbital strike, sometimes you just want it to be faster. But also, if you come up here to orbital cannons, reduces the damage fall off from, cent from the center of explosions caused by orbital stratagems. So anything that's going to say like orbital... Precision Strike, for example, it's going to make the damage fall off less, so the radius is a little bit more effective. Basically, by going through all of these, like, you're going to have heavy weapons. Like, the auto cannon is legit, really good for armor and chunkier enemies. Anti-material rifle, not too shabby against light armor, taking out enemies in big chunks, and then you can take out the rest. If you want to be able to mow down enemies, the machine gun's solid, stalwart's a little bit lighter. Recoilless rifle little mini rocket launcher against some armor, but also if you have a buddy you play with, this could be more effective because one of you could have the ammo on your back, reload it faster, and then you can fire it. But again, if you're playing solo or you're just doing random matchmaking, a little harder to coordinate some of that stuff. So basically the one thing I kind of want to tell you is experiment a little bit, but be cautious where you spend. It takes a little while to get your requisitions. That's like 15,000 I've got right now, and you can see that... Some of these things require, say, 4,000 or 7,500. It's going to take you a little while to earn up enough currency to unlock these. If you think a cluster bomb or napalm strike is going to be effective, maybe, you know, that's not a bad way to go. If you have teammates that you play with consistently, you might talk it out and see who is bringing what. So you can maybe each specialize in certain things. Maybe I am going to be the turret guy and somebody else is going to be the hangar, you know, eagle strike person. Talk it out, figure it out, or if you play solo, kind of figure out what you want to bring to your random teams. If you're always going to be defensive with effective turrets and some pretty potent stuff from far away, that could be your thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just keep in mind that these things are expensive. And then on the modules, you've got this currency over here, like the samples. This stuff takes a little while to unlock, and it takes some time to farm. I can go on a run, and I might find 10 if I explore the whole map in a 40-minute mission, mission and kind of explore everything. 
but also you may go on a run and you may get four. So this stuff is going to take a while to unlock, so you'll be playing for a little while. So if you plan accordingly, you'll probably feel like you get a little more out of things. All right, stratagems are a huge deal for most of the missions that you're going to go on, but your gear is going to make a difference as well. And some of your gear is going to come from your acquisitions. Now you've got a couple different currencies. You had the requisitions that you get, and that's what you use to kind of purchase your stratagems. You've got the samples you'll find on the planet. I'll show you what those kind of look like. But then you've also got your medals that you earn by completing missions, and then your super credits, which you actually can find out in the world on your season pass. You can technically buy the super credits, but I would advise against that because really so far it hasn't really been worth it. So, I mean, for example, uh, just through a couple of the season pass pages, I have acquired some super credits anyway. And the only things I can get so far are some armor that is a bit tankier and, you know, a little more resistant to damage and helps with recoil or something that helps me hold more stims and the stims have a longer effect. I can find the exact same armor in here. I've got some that helps with recoil. I've got some that helps hold more stims. I've got some that helps more grenade hold more grenades. I've got the chunkier armor. All of this stuff is in here, so you don't need to pay for anything. Now, you've got two different battle passes, per se, or whatever you want to call them, season passes. You've got this premium one, which I did buy. I wanted to see what it was going to be like. And this one has a assault rifle that has explosive on it. So, so far it seems to be okay, but I mean, the capacity of the ammo, less, recoil, more, fire rate's a bit slower, and the damage is damn near exactly the same, and I'll show you that. So if you only do the $40 version of the game, you are going to be totally fine. Now, as you acquire medals, you acquire those by completing missions, I'll show you, show you how you can get more of them, you know, more effective for your time. You have to spend X number of medals on each page to move on to the next page. So, so far I've spent, what, 61 total. And to be able to get down to this page, I need to spend 14 more somewhere in these upper pages. Now, one of the things I said I did get, I've got the ability to hold two more grenades at capacity all the time. And also start with more. And also, say I'm using machine guns, for example, but my recoil if I crouch is a lot better. So that's one of those things you'll notice crouching will make a difference, but this helps it even more. Now you've got the ability to get things like boosters, which are really great. These are gonna be benefits to your entire team. Only one of each type, or type of booster can be active, so unlocking more boosters is going to benefit your team because you can actually have multiple things kind of effective, which is really, really nice. Uh, something like the impact grenade, similar damage, but basically it hits on impact. I'm going to get that as soon as I can because the delay sometimes in your grenades will have them miss, and if I could just throw them at what I want to throw them at, that actually would be really, really nice. Um, so there are certain things in here that you are going to want to go for, and then your play style of maybe more stims, maybe more grenades for closing nests. That's the stuff I would go for. Weapons can give you a variety. The only time I would say spend to just move on, I would buy anything else. Like I would buy another weapon that you may or may not totally want to use before I buy, say, a cosmetic banner, an emote, a cape, a helmet. Right now, the capes and the helmets have no benefit to stats. That may change later. That may be something they add into the game. But as of this moment, it does seem that like, you know, the marksman rifle, I've experimented and had a pretty good time with that one. And the machine gun or the submachine gun, the SMG might be a decent sidearm kind of thing. But random stuff like banners and emotes and stuff, only do that if you've literally got everything else. The frag grenade, not great. I, that thing needs like a buff already. But everything else, just spend where you only need to unlock stuff. And then if you want a cosmetic, go for it. But yeah, the metals that you earn on missions, generally going to be usable in here. This stuff's more expensive anyway. Like this armor's 18 Come down here, this one's like 45. It's gonna take a while to get this, and the only difference is still normal stats. Just, I can throw things farther, and my limbs have a little bit more health. That's it. You're not missing out on much. The only one that I probably want, but I mean, this is 180 medals later down here. As this says, medium armor penetration, it actually might have some benefits depending on what you're fighting. But outside of this one thing, which might be like a grenade launcher anyway or something, uh, the booster, not even that good. Incendiary grenade, maybe, depending on what you're fighting. But you're not missing much, so I wanted to show you that. But yeah, it's spending medals per page. Focus on the stuff that actually matters. Cosmetics later. At least that's my way. Now, when you come out of different missions, maybe you're going to fight automatons versus other things. You might want to check your gear over here. And this is where you can actually do comparisons as well. Maybe I want to compare my grenade. Like, I can see the damage is 400. Penetration for armor is 4. This is 3. The radius is a little bigger on the frag grenade, but the fuse time is a little shorter. 
as I said, the one I really want is the impact grenade. I think that one's going to be really great when I get there. Secondary, I've got these two just for comparisons. Primary, for example, as I said, this is the premium one. 55 damage, 55 damage. I can hold literally a 50% more bullets in here. The recoil is damn near half, and the fire rate is faster. So being damaged is the same, and these are just light armor penetrating. Yeah, this has a little bit of explosive, but overall, as I said, normal assault rifle, you will be totally fine without the premium pass, but this is where you're going to kind of pick your gear and get a feel for what you're using. Once you're all set up, you'll come to your table, and this is where you're going to pick your missions. When you come out here, there's a couple things to know about the map. Now, when you're on the map, you're going to notice you have a nighttime cycle because I have a little moon next to my guy and a daytime cycle because I've got a sun. Now, if you've got something right on the border here, it might actually turn into nighttime soon if nighttime rotates around the planet the same way it does on Earth. And then after a little while, you might actually notice it gets darker on your mission. That can happen, and that's okay. If you're open for public and social stuff, you can join friends, or you can just kind of start your own mission with the icons. Now, at the very bottom, if you do quick play, it's just going to like throw you into something that's already going. Not a bad way to go. That way you don't have to think about it too much. You can change your difficulty, you'll start on trivial, you'll get up to easy. And when you do an easy mission, there's one mission in each zone, and you'll see that it's got, you know, 40 minute mission, bug extermination, kill at the two big egg, egg sections, and you're good. And that's going to get you two medals, which is not a bad way to go. When you crank it up to medium, you've actually got the option to do two missions within the same little sector. One will usually be shorter than the other. This is like just kill the terminants to thin their numbers. This one's going to be, you know, evacuate civilians and do other things that you've got to do. This will be a longer mission. So you usually have to do both of those to then unlock the difficulty above. Now you'll notice on the very bottom, it'll say samples. The green samples, those are the common ones. You'll find those on the lower three difficulties. When you get up into challenging, you'll start to see rare samples be available. Those are going to unlock some of the more specialized and higher things for the ship upgrades. Those are the permanent upgrades to make all your stratagems more effective. And then as you work up higher and higher and you get up here, you're going to get the really rare resource and stuff. And you can get all the way up to Helldive, which is just totally bonkers. What you'll notice once I get into challenging, to be able to move on to the next difficulty, you have to beat both of a mission like combo. And then as you get to higher difficulties, you might have to do three in one little area. So it's really up to you what you want to do. You're going by yourself or you don't want to, I would say stay on easy for a while because as soon as you get up to challenging, there are different types of enemies that you're going to be fighting. Chargers, for example, are massively armored. Until you actually have the gear to take care of those or someone on your team does, it's going to be difficult. If you're with somebody who's just absolutely geared out to the max, that's fine. But I will tell you, doing stuff on medium right now, doing one mission getting two, two missions getting four medals, is probably going to be more time efficient than bashing your head against this one to get two more medals. Because you only go between two and four, which is six, versus three and five, which is eight. Two more medals versus... A lot harder mission right now until you're comfortable and you have the loadouts just kind of you know take it a little easier at first unless you're playing with a team that's really stacked if you're playing with a team that works together coordinates well and you're all talking yeah you could probably face some higher stuff but early on two of these missions on medium that'll still keep you busy for a little while and you can level up in a kind of more comfortable fashion other things to know about the map itself depending on what you're trying to go after you've got the area over here against the automatons which is where you're going to be fighting those before you get until you get like armor piercing stuff don't even mess with these guys i would say early on they're just going to be a bit rough so take your time and save those for later but you've also got different planet surfaces if you look at effects you can see um rainstorms on this one you can see this one's pretty normal this one is going to be icy temperatures and this one's going to be hot temperatures so if you want the most neutral run of all of them you can go down here and you can see accounting correlations boost requisitions and XP rewards by 50% to address accounting errors. Responsible parties undergoing. And I think that's something they boosted if there were like login issues and stuff like that. So that's mostly the game. Mostly I was just talking about the weather effects. So just pay attention. That one's visibility. That one's rate of fire being slower. But heat buildup on lasers would be also slower. And then the increase in stamina drain and speed up heat and weapons. That is also going to be, you know, tougher on a heat, hot planet. But if I just go to the planet that I'm on and you pick one of the basic missions, whatever I'm going to do here, daytime missions should, should stay daytime for a little while. Looks like I've got to find some eggs. And then you'll head over here, pick your stratagems. And don't forget if you've got a booster unlocked to pick that as well. So now you can pick your landing zone. 
it's kind of not smart to land right in the middle of the enemy presence, so I might land outside. But also there's usually objectives all over the map. So you might start, say, over here, take this one out, kind of clear out the map, take out the big objectives and then leave, kind of plan a direction. So if I choose here, I'm gonna pick my stratagems. You've got some basic ones that you're always gonna have. But if I want, say, the Napalm Strike and I want the Orbital Strike, I want some kind of heavy weapon for me and then the Gatling's pretty cool, so I will take that. Don't forget your booster if you've got it unlocked. Remember one of each type per team. Ready up, and then you'll land on the ground. So once we land, we'll talk about some more stuff. All right, so when you land, first thing you wanna do, pull up your stratagems and call down your heavy weapon. There's no reason to not have it right out of the gate, so you may as well just get it straight away. That also helps the cooldown timer if you have to call it again, already start going, and it allows you to just have it right here waiting for you. So go ahead and grab this. Now, sometimes you'll find some of these things that are actually like kind of glitching. All you're gonna pretty much do is have to shoot those to destroy them, and you might just find a random heavy weapon out in the world different than you've already like asked for. Now, a couple things about weapons. You've got the ability to crouch and control your recoil. If you notice those little dashes, they come together. The machine gun, for example, really bad. If I move back and forth, it is not accurate. But if I stay stable, it's a little bit better. And then if I lock into a point, I'm usually pretty good. You can go full prone. But again, your goal is typically crouch is doing most of the work for you. But if you hold down reload, you get the options on weapons. Now I can have a faster uh, RPM, so I can actually just fire quicker. Or if I prefer to control my ammo a little bit, fire a little slower. But bring up my regular weapon. I can either go auto, semi-auto, or burst. If I do a burst, it's just gonna do a little three shot burst, but you'll notice I actually have scopes on this thing. So up top, if I wanna go into say first person mode, go here and then click to ADS. And I can choose how I wanna fire this thing. But if I want a longer scope for maybe more range, maybe I've got a sniper rifle, but it zooms in a little too far, you can really pick how much you wanna zoom. And then you can also mess with your flashlight on the bottom and also your fire rate. So if I want auto flashlight for day and night, a little closer scope, I'm good. Now, the nice thing is when you go through and you set some of that stuff up, you can have the game remember it for you. So your aiming mode can be per weapon. If I like certain weapons to aim first person versus third person, it can be, and it can remember that. You can have it be global. If you just wanna be third person the whole time, don't mess with it. Or you can turn it off and it's just going to be, you have to do it manually every time. Per weapon is nice. Once you get comfortable, you kind of figure out which way you want to mess with weapons. And then also the weapon functions. So whether it's first or third person is one thing, but also the RPM, the scope, that type of stuff, you can have it remember. So when you get those weapons back, you don't have to think about it quite as much every time. So those are both beneficial things to change. Also, if you're going for display or graphics, one thing I would recommend, turn motion blur down. It's just going to make things a little better looking. Now... The other thing you have is a ping system. Now, sometimes there's patrols. You might see enemies just walking by or on another side. So you can actually like ping. Bugs. You can ping an enemy and you can say, hey, there's bugs over here, but they found me. And they're gonna be coming. Bags empty. And I pissed off an entire thing. So now is the time where I probably wanna throw a Gatling down. Now, one thing when you're in combat, you can shoot the limbs off of enemies and they're gonna be crawling a little slower and a little funkier. Now, the thing about Gatling guns and everything else, it doesn't care where you are. So it will mow down whatever's in the line of fire and if you're staying in front of it, you're in trouble. So try and stand behind it and kind of make sure you know where you're going. When it comes to combat itself, you can take damage to certain limbs that you have. So if you're running around and an enemy attacks you and swipes your leg and all of a sudden you're kind of doing this like limping thing, don't mind the wonderful, you know, glitch graphic there. Those happen. That's joys of physics. But um, you just need to use a stim to heal yourself and clear that off of you. But you can also, as I showed you, you can wound the limbs of the enemies. And those are going to be things to where it's actually beneficial for you to slow down an enemy in the leg. So if you can focus your fire into one point, that will help you kind of manage some of the bigger enemies that are a little annoying. Now you'll notice right now I haven't reloaded yet. The main reason is you can look and see I've got seven bullets left. Down to three. If you have at least one bullet in your magazine, you're gonna reload faster than if you get all the way down to zero. So my reload time here, is just gonna be quicker if there is at least one bullet in the magazine. But the thing is, if you reload like this one, for example, you can see I'm out. 
the reload just takes a little bit longer. The thing is, you don't want to reload all the time. You don't want to do a half reload. You want to use basically every bullet in that magazine, save for one, because if you reload, the clip is just gone. You don't have like an ammo count. You have a set of clips. So that is kind of the thing. You want to use as much of the entire clip. And again, in the heat of battle, you're probably going to run out. But if you kind of get to a point where you, you know, get a feel for how many bullets you fire, then you might check and see if you got like one left. You're like or a couple left. You might reload for a little faster. But in the heat of battle, try and use all of your bullets smartly because you're likely going to need every one that you can get most of the time. So don't waste your ammo reloading all the time, but reload late and it actually can be faster. Now, while we're here and this thing's going to keep pinging at me, See that little yellow white pulse when they pop up in the air? See them? Well, I've got one over there and one here. These are little things that you're going to want to find because they're going to have usually valuable resources. Now, I might find some ammo. And even with the ping system, I can say Supplies. ammo. And I can just like ping the fact that all these things are here. Supplies. But also this. Support weapon. This is going to be a support weapon. It actually tells you what's inside of it, which is kind of cool. Now, and this can have resources, this can have weapons, this can have a whole bunch of different things to it. Have a taste of democracy. Apparently my Gatling gun is doing some work over here. So now, my machine gun is here. I've got the weapon over there if I want it, but I kind of like the machine gun at the moment. And these little places are going to be called points of interest. So you see the little diamond? Those are points of interest on the map. Because you'll notice when I come over here, there's going to be some ammo. There might be some samples. Sometimes these things also hold medals, which you're going to spend on that season pass. Three medals just for looking around, definitely worth investigation. So don't sleep on searching the maps. It's generally worth it. And this is a sample. Samples are that currency that you're going to want to pick up. And that's what you use for those ship upgrades. Common samples on the lower difficulties and they get higher. Now, they are per map. So if anybody on your team picks them up, they count. But if for some reason you die while holding one, you also drop that. So if any of your teammates die, you are going to want to make sure that if they have those resources, especially if you're talking to each other, or if you're on just normal voice comms, say, hey, I dropped like five samples. Can somebody help find those and pick them back up? It's going to be beneficial for you to do that for everybody's benefit on the team. So always find those. Don't worry if other people do. Everything is basically shared. The only thing that isn't shared are resupplies. Now, I say that in the sense that I can call one down, but it's a global timer. And the other thing to know about the resupplies is that there are four things that drop out of them. But if you do throw it down and you call it down and you take three of them and your other teammates are kind of screwed, everybody's limited. So try not to be a resource hog, and I'm probably as guilty of that as anybody. Also, if you have a stratagem called up, just hit the stratagem button again and you'll cancel it out so you don't have to feel like you're obligated to throw it. Got some enemies over there, but if you drop down, sometimes there's these sections. And this is a prime example. These little crates that are kind of colored like this, I've seen them blue, I've seen them red, maybe even white. You can blow these things up and you're going to get the option to get what's inside. So you have to blow the door off. And then so here's super credits and then requisition slips. I got both just by doing that stuff. So really check in the map, and there's a way eventually, once you get to the map, to actually find all of those if you can find a radar station. So exploring is going to be how you get your a lot of your upgrades unlocked, find more of your currencies, and then if you look for those little white pulses in the air, those are going to be beneficial as well. And so from my original point over here, I've got one more forward, so we're going to keep going. Now what I want to try and find is either a radar station to show you kind of the mini game, or an artillery station so I can show you some of the stuff on the planet. But before I get to that, kind of explaining the map would probably help a little bit. So you can zoom in on your location quite a bit. You can also zoom out quite a lot as well. The red parts are danger zones. Those are gonna be anything with like enemy nests. Obviously your extraction zone will be there. Your major objectives are gonna be destroying eggs in those zones, but any of the red along the way, those are mini nests. Those are gonna give you more requisition, so more currency, more experience for everyone that you clear out. And also the faster you do everything, you get a little benefit as well. But honestly, exploring and finding these resources, way more beneficial than doing something like trying to be fast, unless you've just unlocked everything and you're in the end game kind of thing. Now, if you do use your map, remember like for on for me, I can, I can click in and either look in my direction or if I mouse click, then I can hold and like drag around the mouse, but I can also drop a point on the map. 
Now you're not going to see it here, but you will see it on the compass as a good directional point. And that's a nice way to guide you and your team if you're like, hey, I see this thing. But also if you're like, I want to tag a location, you can do it pretty quick with Q as well. Never mind. And if you do it on accident, no big deal, just cancel it out. Now if you ever come across these locations, you need actually two people to open them. There's not a way to do it solo, that's why co-op is still going to have its benefits. You might have some stim packs, you might have some grenades and some ammo. You have to hit both of those buttons at the same time, and usually they'll have like a heavy weapon and some currencies in there as well. Okay, now that I've got a buddy with me, I'm going to bring him over here and I'm going to show him this. Because now that you have two people in here, one on each button, and you open this up and usually get some goodies. I'm on it. So once it's green, you can hit, you know, disengage and you can let it open. Typically there's a heavy weapon since I've got one, you can probably have that, and maybe a heavy weapon, but this one you've got medals, medals, and requisition slips, just for coming in here for free, I mean, that's, that's awesome. So, again, the exploration is really worthwhile, we closed down that one already, so we're gonna head a bit farther north, and we're gonna check out these two encampments, and one's probably gonna be radar, one might be, a uh, artillery, so we're gonna talk about hopefully both of them, if I'm lucky. So as you can see, this map here with like the two circles, this is typically going to be your artillery. Now, the artillery is like a side objective that you can do, and you'll notice you can load shells into it. You can load explosive shells, you can load, um, there's like electrical shells. The high yield explosive, as opposed to just regular explosive, is going to be kind of like a mini nuke. So if you load that in first, that is going to be the first thing that actually fires out when you call artillery and if you actually turn this whole thing on you can use it as a bonus stratagem as you go through so you are pretty slow carrying these things some people will like try and like pick it up basically so you move a little faster i'm sure that'll get glitched at some point some people are trying to drop it in the air but if you load the heavy one in first you actually have to activate it to be able to load them though that's a fair point so you come over here to the terminal you'll do your like activation mini game then you'll load in the shells and you can see the actually artillery cannon lines up. So now you just load the shells in and then you turn it on. Now you also can load them in groups too. So the high yield explosive, that's like your like mini nuke. I'd throw that one in there first. Then you can throw the regular explosives in there. Those are going to be kind of fired together. But again, you can actually cover more ground if you do this little glitch thing with them. And it just makes the process easier. So any of the red ones you find, we can load those in. And then I've seen ones that will be like smoke or this one, for example, I think is that one's that's the mini nuke, actually. So I've got a couple of these that are all the same. So we got a high yield explosive and then we have the mini nuke. OK. Now, the fact that I died, it's probably a good thing to show you, mostly because you can see I dropped the samples. You always want to make sure you get back to those. I'm kind of throwing my buddy here into the mix. All right, so back to where we were since this all this stuff got knocked out of position. The yellow one is the mini nuke. So there's like high yield, there's medium yield, and then you can see the samples on the ground. Always make sure you pick those back up. Somebody on the team just needs to get them. Yeah, tossing these things around gets to be a little kind of crazy. So again, I loaded these things in probably all the wrong order. But if you do load them in in groups, it seems to be more effective as well in what you can fire. But you do need to load all of them up. So if you work together, looks like we got explosive, just all the regular explosives. So once five are in there, you do have to load five, then you can go activate the terminal. But again, if you pay attention to what you loaded, and these things are usually not too bad, like rotate it around so you see a pretty high signal strength, and then you got to adjust the angle. And once you do that, should be pretty good. And then that should initiate the artillery system and it's loaded. Now, the side objectives like that, really good for experience and stuff along those lines. So, one of the big things that you're going to have to do is say, like, take out all those eggs. Well, now that we've finished the artillery strike, I've actually got the artillery as something that I can call in. And depending on its cooldown time, you can call it in until it's out of ammunition. So, when you've got stratagems, it's really good to use things like the artillery when you get a chance to use it. Because it's not in every mission and they're fun to use on the more difficult ones. So, if you get a big collection of eggs... I'm going to try and load that in right there in front, and we'll see what lands. Take a little while to come in. 
and I literally destroyed every egg in one area in one shot. So when we call in the mini nuke later, that one's gonna be extremely fun to be able to take out the other eggs. So if you find artillery, use it before you leave because it's one of the more fun things that you get to do is call in a giant artillery strike that you set up and you get experience for doing it all. All right, so this is a radar station and radar stations are really nice because they're gonna show basically everything on the map. You're gonna have your little terminal interactions and then somebody is also gonna have to line it up. So first it actually has to raise the dish then it opens the dish, and then you gotta line it up. Do you usually have to defend it? I'll usually throw something down to defend it. Got our teammates here, they're helping me out. All right, so once it's up to the top, you can see it needs about 90 degrees for a turn, so face it the other direction. And you see they're actually rotating it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And there, stop. Extraction is available. So what you would need to do is if you were by yourself is you just have to know that you actually probably have to turn it about 90 degrees from where it's facing. You can actually watch the dish turn. But once it's on and you bring up your map, you can see everything. So you can see every minor place of interest, every little nest. You can see if there's weapons in places, but everything is shown. So finding a radar tower, if possible, is really, really, really nice. Just to be able to um, see everything that you've got available. And I went explosion. And there's the little example on the bottom where all of my limbs are currently injured because I'm dead. So that covers just about everything I've got going for the early to mid game. A lot of gathering resources and exploring is going to help you do that gathering experience and currencies while you do side objectives and clear out nests and open up crates and boxes and all those things. You can get free super credits just by exploring, so please don't buy those, doesn't really seem necessary. And as for the armor, the changes seem variable, but when you get to different weapons or different grenades, that's stuff that's worth a trial. And then for stratagems, I really do think there's going to be a benefit to either specializing in some, talking it over with your team, seeing if you are going to be beneficial to focus here, I'll be beneficial focusing over here. Then if we get random teammates in, they can bring whatever they want. Uh, if you're playing solo and you're just doing a whole lot of just random matchmaking, again, if you specialize in something, you're still bringing something good to the table. So hopefully this video was beneficial to you. I know it was longer, but there's just a lot of little stuff to cover. So I try to jam it all into one video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like below. If there's something major I forgot and, you know, anything that anybody should probably know, feel free to throw that in the comments. The big stuff I'll try and like, like and send it farther up to the top. But if you guys want to see more from me, please hit that like, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell. You'll get more videos from me about this and many other things. And then if you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it's Ebonsis over there. But here, thank you guys for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.